Hello everyone, we are Team Watermelons, consisting of Esther, Miru, Lening, and Wendolin. Today, we will be sharing more about our robot and our preparation leading up to the competition. We will first go into our hardware build, followed by software where we will share the strategies we took. Let us first start off with the hardware section. We will first elaborate on our grab and lift mechanism. For this mechanism, there is a tendency for the claw to do the more energy efficient action first, between grabbing and lifting. If lifting is done first, the object might fall out of the claw's grip. Thus, to ensure that the object does not fall out, we designed the claw such that grabbing is more energy efficient than lifting, so grabbing is favoured. This was done by adding wheels to the claw so that more energy is required to lift than to grab. For the design of our claw, we tried to make the claw flat instead of angled. As shown in the picture, the angled claw has a much higher chance of getting caught on the ramp, while the robot is moving as compared to the flat claw. Therefore, we decided to have a flat claw to ensure a smoother movement of the robot along the ramps. The length of the claw was also designed to have the same length as the robot for two reasons. Firstly, having the claw as wide as the robot ensures a greater contact area with the object, especially for the larger balls. This decreases the likelihood of the robot missing the object or dropping the object in the middle of the pickup. Secondly, to prevent the claw from grinding against the wall while aligning in the exact zone, the claw needs to be kept the same length as the robot. We connected the claw to a half beam to ensure a three-point contact on the left, right and back of the object. This creates a more stable and secure grip as compared to just two-point contact. Apart from this, we also added a sponge onto the front surface of the claw to increase the friction so that the object can stay in the claw while being lifted. For the sorting mechanism, it is a four-compartment platform directly connected to the media motor. The platform turns to the compartment assigned to the specific object whenever it is detected. Each compartment stores only one object, so each object can be deposited separately, since there are two deposit zones for the different objects. Our robot also has a trigger, which will allow the position of the balls. It is positioned at the back of the robot and is free to rotate at an angle of around 30 degrees. To deposit, the robot moves all the way back until the trigger pushes against the wall of the deposit zone. This will cause the hook of the trigger to push the flap of the compartment up, causing the ball or rescue kit on that flap to deposit. Zooming into the trigger, the contact point of the hook part of the trigger is made to be further away from the pivot of the flap so that lesser force is required to push the trigger. Since the moment is force multiplied by distance, a larger distance from the pivot creates a larger moment, even with a smaller force. Thus, this allows the deposit mechanism for our robot to be easily triggered. Now, moving on to the sensors used on our robot. We use two evidry light sensors for line tracking and one high-technique front sensor for object detection and color identification. The two evidry light sensors are spaced one sensor apart, so that they are on either side of the black line for better line tracking. We use a high technique front sensor instead of EV3 color sensor for the front sensor as it has a relatively larger range of values, allowing it to sense obstacles or objects from a further distance. Additionally, we angle the high technique front sensor to tilt 45 degrees down to sense the balls from the top. This allows for a more sensitive change in color between black ball, silver ball, and the white floor as the sensor value for the black ball falls rapidly while that of the silver ball increases rapidly in relation to the white floor. This makes the identification of the different colored balls more reliable and accurate. That is all for the hardware section. We will now continue with the software section. We will start with line track. We use the RGB mode on the EV3 color sensors for our line track, which allow us to differentiate between green squares, the red stop line, and the silver and black lines indicating the entry and exit of the evacuation zone. We use a proportional line track, whereby the difference between the two values the color sensor sensors is multiplied by a gain, such that the greater the error, the more aggressive the correction. Next, we will go into more detail about the green square detection. As we realize that there will always be double black after each green square, the robot can depend on the double black for detection of green squares. The robot only starts searching for green squares after it has sensed double black, which reduces the likelihood of false detection. To identify the colors of the various lines and the green squares, we use calibrated RGB values, which compares the different values of each channel against values obtained for white and black. The calibration formula is as shown. 
This makes the detection of colour more accurate by comparing the different values consistently. We will now move on to obstacle avoidance. We are using the front colour sensor to identify an object. Whenever an object is detected, the robot turns to the side, such that the top sensor on the right of the robot can sense the obstacle. The robot will then manoeuvre around the obstacle, maintaining a constant distance away from the object to avoid hitting it. Moving on to the evac zone navigation, we explored two ways to manoeuvre in the evac zone, namely by snaking and spiralling. In the end, as compared to snaking, we chose to spiral the evac zone as it was much quicker, thus saving us more time while still reliably detecting and picking up balls. Moving on to the evac point detection. In its first outer spiral prior to reaching the four corners, the robot turns and uses its TOF to check if there is a hole in front of it. If there is a hole, it stores the particular corner as not a deposit point, but instead as an exit. It executes a set of motions to navigate through that corner. If there is no hole at the front, the robot continues to move forward and overshoots the distance moved, such that it bonks onto either the wall or exit in front of it. To differentiate between a wall and a deposit zone, the robot uses the front sensor RGB values. If the percentage of R in RGB is more than 50, the robot will identify the corner as a red deposit zone. If the percentage of green in RGB is more than 37, the robot identifies it as a green deposit zone. However, if none of the above cases is satisfied, the robot will be able to identify that there is no deposit zone in the corner. Lastly, exit detection. While doing its outer spiral, the robot uses its TOF value to measure its distance from the wall. In the presence of a hole, the TOF value increases beyond a stated threshold, thus identifying an exit. The robot then stores the exit hole under the wall it is currently sweeping, so as to find the exit again at the end of the evac sequence. And with that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for your kind attention.